This presentation is in response to my esteemed colleague Hans' presentation. And the problem I had with the model is the product. It was, it's a pretty strong statement. I would say the model is a product. But when Brian gave me this assignment, I thought to myself, like, what do you mean the model is the product? Like, how am I even supposed to give this presentation? Like, what am I arguing against? Like, who believes that the model is the product? Like, does anyone believe that? And like, there must be something more to the argument than just that title, the model is the product. And so I did some research, trying to figure out like, where does this argument come from and how did it originate? And uh, the person that I found that was a, kind of the most vocal proponent of this idea is uh, Alexander Doria. And he has this uh, wonderful blog post, The Model is the Product. And, you know, I recommend going through it. But the, the post puts forth several arguments. So let's go through them one at a time. So argument one is that as models get better, they displace complexity. So we heard that from Han, and I agree. You don't have to do crazy loops and crazy architectures. You can just maybe even one-shot it as the model gets better. Argument two is that the foundation model labs will move up the stack. This is a tweet from Naveen Rao, and he argues that, or he predicts that foundation model providers will stop offering APIs in the next two or three years. Bold prediction. And, and as of, so why, why does he argue that? Well, he says that, look, uh, for an open model service, the value is kind of going up the stack and the, the model is a commodity. And, uh, you know, basically that these closed models you know, they're going to shut off their APIs and they're going to offer the intelligence through products. And this is cited in Alex Doria's blog post as one of the arguments. I think it kind of cuts against the model as a product, to be honest, because now we're talking about the product is a product, but we can come back to that. Um, <clears throat> the third argument is, hey, uh, search, encoding, or just canaries. Like, look at what the large foundation models have done with with search and uh, you know, what, they're, what they're doing with coding, um, you know, now with the acquisition of Windsurf. And you know, now things like search are like more deeply trained into models. And so that they can do more than just, let's say, the product. And the next argument is that Alexander puts forth is, okay, train or be trained. And, you know, Alexander, he goes through and he says, look, the most high profile rappers are scrambling to become high hybrid AI training companies like Cursor and Windsor for training their own models. Now, let me just gray out some of the text here. <laughs> high profile rappers, Cursor and Windsor. I mean, that's a really strong pejorative statement for Cursor and Windsor. Like, uh, do you think they're rappers? I'm saying everything is a rapper at that point. Um, you know, I would say we don't need to hold products in so much contempt by calling them rappers. There's a non-trivial amount of engineering going on beyond the model. And even when something like Claude Code, I would argue this is a product. There is a lot of thought, design, engineering, and thoughtfulness has gone into Claude Code. Yes, it's enabled by models, but it is a product. So what is the real argument behind the model is the product? The re if you kind of synthesize these views and these statements together, what is, we're really saying is, look, foundation model labs, they'll, they'll usurp all of the value of AI products by moving upstream, by moving up the stack. And you know, they'll create domain-specific agents and dom domain-specific things. And they'll capture all the value. And that's kind of the fundamental premise behind the argument. But 
haven't we heard this before? I mean, you've all heard this question thrown at you. Why won't Amazon build it? Does anyone take that seriously? I don't take it seriously. You could just replace Amazon with OpenAI, with Google. And you have to really ask yourselves, like, the why won't OpenAI build it? Is that really an argument that we want to entertain and even waste our time on? So I would say, look, the model is the, with capital T, the product. That's going a little bit too far. Let's say the model is definitely a product. And so let's step back a little bit. When we're building an AI product, what are we talking about? So AI engineering kind of consists of two different things. One is, you know, you're trying to get the model to do what you want. So how do you do that? Well, you use many different tools like, you know, prompt engineering. You might have like MCP tools, RAG, frameworks, so on and so forth. So there's that component, getting the AI to do what you want. And then there's a whole other aspect of figuring out what you want. And what that means is applying your taste, judgment, designing a good user interface. And I think what the argument is, and, I, and, I, and just to kind of give an illustration, this is a recent blog post from the Airbnb tech blog about accelerating migrations with LLMs. And you can see they're going through a lot of complexity to effectuate the migration. It's actually like less complexity than you had to do before. They're, they're basically get, writing this blog post about, okay, how are they getting the model to do what they want? Now, in the camp of the model is the product, effectively arguing like, hey, that getting the model to do what you want is going to become a lot easier. And kind of building your moat around that isn't smart. And maybe the future looks like this, where you don't spend as much time getting the model to do what you want, but you spend all your time thinking, applying your taste, judgment, design, UX, and figuring out what you and your users want. So like getting the model to do what you want, figuring out what you and your users want, it really comes down to you have to articulate what you and your users want. And there's no escaping that. GitHub Copilot in Cursor, for the longest time, they've had access to the same models. Maybe not at the present, but for a very long period of time, they've access to the same models. And I would say very, very different products with very different capabilities and very different reactions from, from users. And I would say um, the part that was not the model is doing a lot of work. But in conclusion, like, I think we're really saying the same thing. Just kidding. <laughs> you didn't come here just for me to, you know, kind of just make peace. We came here for war and blood. So let's, let there be war. So let's just go harder on this. The model is definitely not the product. Your taste, judgment, design, UX matter a lot. Okay, so let's take a case study. Google. They have state-of-the-art LLMs. They even own their hardware. So they're not even paying NVIDIA. They have the, one of the best distribution channels. They have 5 billion users um, you know, on their products or more. As, as uh, I looked it up, and that's the answer I came up with, but it's very large. So based on this, based on these arguments, it's game over, right? They must have the best products. Like, kind of th their model stack will afford them to create products that really no one should be able to compete with. So let's look at their AI products, and let's reflect. So Google Docs and Gemini, I would argue, is not a serious product. If you open a Google document, 
The AI cannot help you with formatting. It cannot interact with comments. It, doesn't, it cannot show you a diff. It is just kind of a window dressing of what AI is supposed to be, but it's not really, it's not really there. Calendar in Gemini. It's not serious either. I tried to schedule a meeting with Brian before this conference, and it doesn't have access to my contacts. So what, what's the point of having doing anything with your calendar if you can't access my contacts? Um, it just, it's absolutely ridiculous. Mail in Gemini, okay? I asked Gemini to send an email to Brian. It said, I can't help with that. Uh, just during this talk, I saw a tweet from, from Pete Komen, and he has an essay about Gmail's useless email writing AI system. He calls it horseless carriages. Check it out. It goes in depth into this frustration. Just to go a little bit deeper into the, the, uh, the email, I meant to say email plus Gemini here. So he sent an email to Brian asking him to review this document. I can't help with that. I'm like, great, okay, fine, you can't help with that. The least you can do is generate text. Okay, so I said, okay, can you just prepare an email draft? And this is Dear Marion. Who the hell is Marion? I have no idea. <laughs> what is going on here? I have this, I mean, I don't, I don't even know what to say. I really don't know what to say. It's, it's ridiculous. Sheets plus Gemini. Insert synthetic data into the spreadsheet given these column headings. I can't help with that. I can't help with that. This, I mean, like, so, you know, again, company that has state-of-the-art models, they have excellent distribution, and they have a product, but they don't have a product. Slides in Gemini. I tried to use uh, Gemini to help me make this uh, presentation. I said, hey, Create a check mark green bullet with text, hardware, taste, and judgment. It says, I can't help with that. What can you do? I try to get help. I try my best to get help with really anything. And it just refuses me. On the other hand, third parties can do this. This is a, this is a software called Lindy, which is actually pretty cool. So I was able to ask Lindy, hey, schedule a meeting with Brian at 4 p.m. to discuss the data council's talk. Is able to find it in my contacts and schedule that appropriately. But there is jagged comp competency here. I will say, I'll give it something to Google that the Gemini search is pretty decent. It's able to search my drive and it's able to search fairly well. And I like AI Studio. But when we're talking about the mainstream products outside search and coding and stuff like that, we have a problem. So to kind of like not make this about Google, let's take a company that is just focused on products. And you know, they've kind of outsourced the modeling to someone else. We're talking about Microsoft. So Microsoft has had a, you know, exclusive access to models and they get access to them first. But hey, if I open a Microsoft 365 Copilot, it, it so this is a screenshot from me asking, hey, summarize the 10 most recent Word documents in my OneDrive. It tells me, hey, I can't do that, but why don't you open your own files and why don't you read them yourself and take notes? <laughs> I don't know whether this is funny or sad or what. I had lots of emotions while, while experiencing this. And Microsoft responded to me, some people that work on, on these products, and said, hey, uh, so the first response that came to someone's mind was, am I an enterprise account? I mean, that's all, yeah, we can just move on to the next slide. So in conclusion, you are the moat, not the model. Your taste in product sense is the moat. Thank you.
Thank you.